Fourth time's a charm. Kaylee Hyde recently made a video about her favorite television ships, and I thought to myself, hey, why not ride on the coattails of greatness and make my own video about my favorite ships because I've sure got a hell of a lot of them. The bottom half of this page is all the ships I listed that I was going to talk about, but I've made this video four times already and I just don't have the tolerance to sit here and edit it. So, I'm going to talk about my top ten. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Are they in my top ten? Today they are. Deal with it. First of all, number ten. Jim and Pam. Obviously. How can you not? Number nine, uh, from the OC, Sandy and Kirsten Cohen. Ha <laughs> ha, curveball suckers. I didn't say Seth and Summer, even though they're on here. I feel like Sandy and Kirsten were the greatest power couple, and when they fought in season two, I lost my shit. I thought they were going to get divorced. I freaked out. I was like, they can't be like the Coopers. They can't fall apart. It would just be too much for me. They just go so well together. They meld and it's perfect and it's beautiful and I can't help but love it. Number eight from Freaks and Geeks we have Daniel Desario and Kim Kelly. Prom king and queen everybody. It's one of those relationships that you just see and you know they're gonna be together forever because there's no denying it because they're perfect for each other. The, the, the definitive fact that makes me know that I ship them so hard is that at the very end of the episode Mosh and Nosh after Daniel like comes back from the punk rock club all screwed up and goes to Kim's house, I cry like a baby every time because it's beautiful and they just belong together. Number seven, Ben and Leslie. I feel like it took so long for them to find an adequate like male counterpart for Leslie, but it was worth the wait because Ben is perfect. They're just so cute together and they get each other how did the creators not see this before? I don't know. I don't know. It took too long. Number six of all the short-lived series and all the ships that I have, this is probably the most emotional one, and that is the ship of Belle Rowley and Freddie Lyon. Belle and Freddie just have a friendship that is so, like, charged emotionally with, like, true love that you wonder why it takes so long for them to get together. If you don't want to go and watch the whole series, then just go and watch the last scene from the last episode where Belle is reading her letter to Freddie. When I saw it, I cried so hard my family thought that someone had died. Okay. Number five. Now I know everybody ships Ned and Chuck, but I don't appreciate the Dr. Frankenstein Frankenstein's monster relationship that Ned and Chuck have. It's too much. However, I do appreciate that Olive appreciates Ned and doesn't use him to bring back her dead father. Even though that like Ned brought Chuck back for like selfish reasons, their entire relationship is just built on a lie. Ned and Olive could have something real and I just think they're so cute because it's so adorable because ugh, they don't look related, first of all. Second of all, she's like two feet shorter than him. Third of all, she's hopelessly devoted to him, which we learn in the first episode and it's just it's just beautiful. I love it. Number four. Another short-lived series that I have a, like, pretty rock hardship that I am sailing on is um, from Bunheads, and that is the relationship of Michelle and Hubble. Possibly the shortest relationship that I could possibly ship because it only lasted, like, three quarters of an episode, but whatever. It was built on a foundation of, like, two years. So, I mean, obviously, if it weren't for Hubble, we wouldn't have the entire series because then she wouldn't be stuck in paradise and she would not have the Dance Academy or Fanny or any of her adventures. And I feel like they really made her character care about Hubble, obviously, because she stayed, first of all, and second of all, because she had, like, at least three dreams about him. Number three, Will and Grace. I know it can never happen. I know that Will's a gay man and Grace is a straight woman and I just have to accept that fact, but they just like genuinely love each other as humans and as friends and I just love that. I feel like they don't need anybody else. From Gilmore Girls, Lorelai and Luke. Obviously. They just have so much chemistry and they work so well together. They're perfect opposites. He just obviously cares very much about her and he'll do anything for her and her daughter and I feel like that says a lot about him as a, like, 
previous loner who doesn't have any friends and doesn't have relationships. And then, of course, there's the ship to sail all ships, the ship that will never sink, my ultimate ship, Rory and Jess. Because compared to Dean and Logan, Jess gets Rory the most, I think. Uh, he's the most compatible with her in more ways than one, and he is, in my opinion, the best looking. So, whatever. Some of our honorable mentions include Morgan and Mindy, Lane and Dave, Richard and Emily, Corey and Topanga, Sean and Angela, Amy and Alan, Zach and Kelly, Niles and Daphne, Phil and Keeley, Ned and Mose, and of course, Lizzie and Gordo. I'm out.